uh, that might want to feed their family may turn to it, and so we have to be highly visible to, as a deterrent. Well, I mean, I've seen the statistics, and I'm glad you'll admit it's going up. A lot of police chiefs don't want to admit it's going up, but it is exploding. Uh, it is, and uh, we 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 try not to, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, you try your best, and in and, and, and tight, tight economic times, we need to make sure that we as a police department that we're positioned to keep people safe because that's our primary function. I think the primary function of government is to keep people safe. Well, I'll say one good thing that did happen with the Austin police. My parents were out of town. Somebody kind of kicked in the back door, and the alarm went off. Within uh, two minutes of the alarm going off, the, the police were there. They went in and checked the house, closed the door, waited for me to get there. Excellent. And, and I you know, drove over, and they were very nice. So. Outstanding. Well, I, you know, we instituted, because, you know, we, we, it's, you, you don't have a, an empty checkbook as a police department. The, the taxpayers only have so much money they can give us. So we now have what's called the Priority One Hot Shot Calls, that uh, when certain uh, crimes are occurring, we actually respond with lights and signs now, Code 3, and that's had a really tremendously positive impact on our response times. Well, also, it makes the, the thieves uh, paranoid because they hear you the... You know what? It was so funny is that you might have critics out there, and you got it. You, you right away figured out why we're doing that. You know, it, the comfort level of the crooks, because they hear those signs, they don't know where they're going. And we've actually been going to a separate hot shot call. Well, uh, one instance where some guys were robbing. And it flushes our, another one out. Yes, and uh, they they hadn't even gotten the money from the restaurant yet. They heard our our police sirens. They left. And then they weren't even, we weren't even going to that car. We were going to well, that police chief Art Acevedo, quite a trooper coming in to run the gauntlet. We'll be right back over this quick break. Do you have aches and pains or suffer from indigestion or inflammation? Are you tired of feeling restless from insomnia? These symptoms are produced by negative toxins, but with the correct information, understanding, and care, you can cleanse them from your body. AlloMaster.com would like to help you begin the road to recovery with aloe vera. For over 4,000 years, aloe vera has been known for its therapeutic and healing properties and is widely recognized as the plant that helps alleviate minor burns. AlloMaster.com picks the best aloe leaves and produces the most potent aloe vera concentrated juices and freeze-dried capsules you can find. AlloMaster.com offers products with 10 times the potency of ordinary aloe products, enhancing the benefits of this ancient cleansing plant. Turn over a new leaf and visit us today at AlloMaster.com. That's A-L-O-E Master.com or call us at 1-800-934-ALLOE. That's 1-800-934-2563 today. May I have everybody's attention, please? I've come with a message of information. 9-11 was an inside job. Do you like being a puppet, sir? Do you like being a puppet for the New World Order? How do the American people know that 9-11 was a stage, was engineered by you, David Rockefeller, the Trilateral Commission, the CFR? Please sit down and shut up. The day that we stop asking questions is the day that we have allowed the seeds of despotism to grow at our own door. Seven years after the attacks of September 11th, a global awakening has taken place. An inside job? How dare you? If you know that there's treason going on, you can be held accountable for treason yourself. All hell is breaking loose on 6th Avenue. And if the government has not told the truth in five years, we will be here on the 10th anniversary of my Truth Rising. Download the film at prisonplanet.tv right now or get the DVD at infowars.com. It's now time to take the revolution to the next level. The United States seems to be celebrating over its triumph of reducing government debt. But the truth be told, public and private debt increased to a record high in 1999, reaching a peak of $14.8 trillion, marking 10.57% annual increase, outpacing its previous 10 years. The U.S. economy receives its currency by taking on debt through private banking institution called the Federal Reserve System. In the year 2000, debt growth collapsed to only 4.5%. It's bad enough that the U.S. citizens is bound by debt in order to have commerce. However, shocking the economy with the reduction of this magnitude could wipe out years of growth in a stock portfolio. Before you make your next investment decision, get the cold hard facts. Call 1-800-686-2237 for your free report on the outstanding level of public and private debt. You must understand how recession and depression are driven by outstanding debt. Call 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Hi, this is Steve Shank. eFoods does it again. The three-day responder provides one adult with three days worth of healthy, delicious, easy-fix food. The price of the three-day responder is almost ridiculous at $21.95 for actually 12 meals plus snacks. 
When you taste the food in the three-day responder, you will understand why families trust eFoods Direct to provide healthy, delicious food for every need. Whether you're hunting, playing, or responding to an emergency, the food in the three-day responder is easy to fix and ready to go. Food is an everyday need. The three-day responder is for the time when food should be the last thing you have to worry about. The three-day responder, $21.95. Sometimes the best things do come in the smallest packages. Call 800-409-5633. On the web, eFoodsDirect.com. That's 800-409-5633. On the web, eFoodsDirect.com. Chief, we got cut off by the break, and you're good for the rest of the hour, right? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. Okay, good. Um, you were continuing with the uh, visibility um, of the police to to, to make the the, the turn effect, yeah. So, tell us more about that. So anyway, you know, by by having that code three response, it reduces our response times. It in, instills a sense of urgency in our police officers, and I think it re- diminishes the uh, the uh, comfort level for the crooks. And so we had a guy, like I said, robbing a, uh, a pizza place. Our guys are going to another priority one call. They hear the sirens. They split. Don't even take any money. Don't hurt anybody. And uh, so we were able to thwart a robbery just by changing our response protocol, which well, is a good thing. Well, I actually don't uh, speed that much, but it actually has helped me a few times, The you know, <laughs> seeing the black and white. But I've noticed what the police are doing, especially because you got to raise revenue because the economy's down, uh, is that the police always wait at the bottom of highway hills. And so yeah. I've got to put my car always on cruise control yeah. now, which then becomes a problem when I remember to slow down. Yeah. Uh, because if I don't, I'm going 60 on, say, Capital of Texas, and yeah. there they are waiting at the bottom. And I look, and I'm going 67, and I've got to – I mean, literally, the yeah. last few tickets I got, well, I guess I got one about a year ago, was this – I mean, I'm not uh, – and used to the cops wouldn't give you a ticket if you're going five, six miles over. Now yeah. they're doing it. I don't think that's fair when they're waiting on a hill, <laughs> hoping you speed up down the hill. Yeah. Well, actually, our power enforcement team usually looks at crash, crash data and when they decide where to prioritize or patrol. Uh, I, I'd have to look at what hill you're talking about specifically to see what the crash data is. You know, but they're always at the bottom of hills. Huh? Well, always... but traditionally, depending on, on how, how deep of a hill it is, crashes are usually occur more because of that reason. People uh, drive a, a very fast going down the hill. And then going uphill, what happens? Slow down. Uh, well, no, the, you have people end up getting fatality crashes because they're in and out of traffic. The ones are in a hurry, and what will happen is you have the big rigs, the, the big trucks that can't really go fast up the hill, and a car will change lanes, and here comes this guy, and all of a sudden we'll rear end and be decapitated by driving like maniacs. Well, since I had children, I haven't even, haven't even had a fender bender because once you have children, they're with you, and you really start thinking about driving yeah. better. And and I see these people that zoom around me for no reason. Yeah. Even when I'm in the slow lane, and now I get mad at them. I'm like the old man who used to stand out there yelling at me in high school when I'd speed yeah. through the neighborhood yeah. because now I'm that old man. Yeah, well, you see, and the, and the problem is in our country that we lose every two and a half years the equivalent of the number of troops that died in Vietnam over 10 years on our highways. Yeah. 58,000. And 50% of those on a national level, nearly half, are drunk driving related, which is why I'm really aggressive when it comes to... Well, Chief, but I mean, if you want to stop the drunks, this is what I don't like. A lot of nights I work till midnight up here. Like, I'm I'm working on a film right now about Obama. I left at midnight. Mm -hmm. And that's when the cops are out looking for drunks, and they get on my tail, other people's tails, and I'm driving home, and why run checkpoints? Why why take blood? You can see drunks every every night driving home, I see drunks. They either drive real slow, or they drive fast, or they speed up and slow down, and they're drifting around... And yeah. I, I see drunks every night. I mean, how could the police not catch them? Well, no, we do catch them. The problem isn't catch them. The problem is the second part of that is we need to uh, get the evidence to be able to hold them accountable for two reasons. One, we want to get the conviction, not because we want to punish these folks, but because we want through that conviction comes requirements to go to, to some educational programs. But that sets training. the precedent when you're out there with, 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 with injectors. Sucking blood on the side of the road. I mean, if, I mean, if this it's is not on the side of the if road. this is constitutional, yeah. why wasn't it done before? Uh, because it's a matter of not people not exercising some leadership. Let me let me just say, but this. is it a legal warrant? Because there are these rubber stamp warrants. I had a t- but- yeah. We talked about that. Well, here's the issue: if 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 our officers have to prepare what's called a probable cause declaration, you know that in our city, our police officers have video cameras in their car where the, where the stop is taped and the actions of the suspect are on, cap, captured on tape. If our officers describe behavior and and that probable cause uh, declaration.